Well, God bless you, dear ones, and all of you out there in viewing land, and welcome to another edition of the Image of Christ Ministries broadcast. I'm your host, where we're speaking the mind and the heart of God. Now, I encourage you, go get your Bible, go get your notepad and your pen. We're going to dive off into the Holy Scriptures to see what it is that the Lord would deal with us about on tonight. Now, we've been dealing with a series of teachings that's entitled, praise God, Living in Hope for the Future, and we're dealing with um, the topic on tonight, what we should have hope for. My, my, my. All right, dear ones, I need your help. We're trying to get this word out to as many people as we possibly can. We are live right now on Facebook at Image of Christ, I-N-T-L. And we're also live right now on YouTube at Image of Christ, I-N-T-L. Now, we also have different social media platforms at Instagram at Gerald.Flint and also Threads at Gerald.Flint. Praise God. And you can also find us uh, on LinkedIn at Gerald Flint, Facebook at Gerald Flint. And then we have a X uh, at Gerald Flint or Twitter uh, at Gerald Flint. I'm asking you to take a couple of moments and go check us out on these different social media platforms. Praise God. And when you do so, I'm asking you to like to follow, to share, and subscribe. Amen. Connect with us on these different platforms. Praise God. Help us to get the word of God out to as many people as we possibly can. Praise God. This is our objective. This is our aim. Amen. To touch as many people for Jesus Christ as we can. And as you share, as you copy, text, email it, message it out to some folks. Uh, make sure you subscribe, that you like, that you follow each of the platforms. Praise God. We're going to be making a big push this next year. Amen. For the name of the Lord. And uh, we just thank you for partnering with us and helping us in this pursuit. Praise God. But listen, I don't want to delay. I want to get off into the word. I'm just thrilled about what God is dealing with us about and expectant. Amen. That he is going to minister and bless our hearts. Praise God. As we focus in on the word of God, talking about living in hope for the future and talking about what we should have hope for. All right, let's go into the message today and I'll be back to pray for us uh, uh, in a little bit. Amen. Father, we thank you for <clears throat> another day. We thank you for another moment to come and to hear and to receive of your word. We thank you, Father God, that you are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you that the entrance of your word bringeth light and understanding to the simple. The master, we put our faith, our hope, our trust, our dependence, our reliance, our allegiance, our loyalty, our dedication on and in you. You are the great and the almighty God, our protection, our provision. You are provident. And we praise and honor and magnify and glorify your holy name. Master, I ask that you will use this vessel to speak through, to think through, to demonstrate your power and your glory through, to impact and to bless your people. Now open our eyes that we may see and perceive, our ears that we may hear and understand, our heart to know and discern your plan and purpose for this time and season. Lord, change us, Lord, from... Uh, wayside ground, from thorny ground, from stony ground to good ground. And as we behold, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, may we be changed from glory to glory into the very image of Christ. In Jesus name, we pray. Everyone say, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. We are very thankful to be in his house. Very thankful to uh, be privileged <clears throat> to preach and teach his word. Very thankful to have the Holy Spirit. In times old, people didn't have the Holy Spirit like we have the Holy Spirit now. We have been wonderfully blessed and graced of the Father to have the Holy Spirit, which enables us to understand the word of God, <clears throat> which enables us, empowers us to live the word of God. Those in time past did not have what we have in having the Holy Spirit. And so we should not take for granted or take lightly 
what we have received and been given by the Lord. I want us to begin to read today in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 through verse 8 is what we'll read. Please read the chapter in your meditations at home. Jeremiah chapter 5, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 17, verse 5 through verse 8 we're reading right now. Notice what the word of God says. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man that maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord. For he should be like the heath of the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places of the wilderness and the salt land and not inhabit it. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. He should be as a plea planted by the, wa planted by the waters that springeth out her roots by the river. And shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Amen. And he goes on to say a few more things in this respect. We've been dealing with the series of teachings that's entitled <clears throat> Living in Hope for the Future. Everybody say living in hope, living in hope. For, the for the future. Looking at that verse eight one more time. Notice what it says in verse eight. It says, uh, he should be like a tree. Verse seven, excuse me. Blessed is the man. <clears throat> blessed is the man. What did it say? Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. So we've been talking about living in hope for the future. And what we specifically want to deal with today is what should we have hope for? What should we have hope for? Now, as we've been going through and talking about our focus, Praise God. We've been noticing <clears throat> the focus is uh, there is a hope that originates in us based on what we have seen or what we uh, desire, uh, what we've seen or what we've imagined. It's our desires. It's our dreams. It's what we want to transpire in life. It's us. You might have been watching TV. You saw somebody dancing. You said, oh, I want to be a dancer. That's because you saw that. Mm -hmm. You might have been watching TV. And you saw somebody who was a lawyer. Uh, there's a movie just came out recently about a lawyer named Gary that was from Florida. I can't remember the name of it. Right? It was called um, Burial. Right. Just came with Jamie Foxx portraying him. He's a lawyer. And you may see that and say, oh, man, he's tough. He's smooth. He's this. He's that. He's got money. He's got a plane. He's got this. That, that. I want to be a lawyer. You saw that. You want it because of something you saw. Him. You might have been watching football or basketball. You know, when we were growing up, uh, Michael Jordan was big and he was he was smooth. He was jumping. He was soaring through the air. <clears throat> he had his shoes. He had his baggy shorts. You know, he was just smooth. They came out with a song. Uh, Sometimes I dream that he is me. Can't you see that's how I dream to be? It was a commercial. <clears throat> dream I move. Dream I grew like Mike. If I could be like Mike. Right. That, see, that came from something we saw, something we imagined. <clears throat> So you hoped, you aspired, you wanted to be like Mike, right? That originates in us. But our faith is based on a hope that originates in God, not us, in God. His plan and his provision that he has made available for those who believe in him through Jesus Christ. We should be living in order to obtain that hope. So some people see a Bugatti, they want a Bugatti. They see a Maserati, they want a Maserati. They see a Lambo, they want a Lambo, <clears throat> right? So we're, you're, you're walking by sight, the things that you see. You're trying to attain and grasp the things that you see. But the scripture and our faith and relationship in God is built on a desire to obtain the things that we see uh, that come from revelation of the Holy Spirit Amen. From relationship with God, from intimacy with him. And that it is hope that he puts in us. There's a verse of scripture. Uh, I guess we could look at it. Um, it's in Psalms. Run over there to Psalms. I think it is 37. I'll get it exactly for us here. Psalm 37. And uh, I remember as a younger minister, uh, listening to people <clears throat> teach on this verse here, um, interpreting it two different ways. Mm. 
and um, Psalm 37, I think it's verse five. Um, Let's look at this verse together here for just a moment. Uh, Praise God forevermore. Um, It's not really the one I want. Hold on a second. I'll read this one to you and then we'll um, go to the other one as well. But these two, they go together and they're very, they're very close on what they say. Let's go up just a little bit to verse one. <clears throat> verse one says this. If you're with me, say amen. 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 Fret not yourself. This is Psalms 37, starting at verse one. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity, <clears throat> for they shall soon be cut down. They shall what now? They shall soon be cut down like the grass uh, that withers uh, as the herb, as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Oh, this, is, this is it. This is the verse I want to. Trust in the Lord and do good. Uh, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shall be fed. Delight thyself, is verse four. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Now, there's really a couple of ways that this can be understood. Delight thyself in the Lord means to take your joy, take your pleasure, take uh, let that which brings happiness, that which brings contentment and satisfaction to you. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart, right? Um, Meaning that he will give you what it is that you desire. He will allow you to have it. That's one way of interpreting it. Others also would interpret is if you delight yourself in the, and I guess I can scripturally show us that both of them are true. The other way of interpreting is if you delight yourself in God, you take your pleasure in him, you put your uh, satisfaction in him. You allow him to be that which pleases you and satisfies you, that he will put desires in your heart. He'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll put them inside of you. He'll put desire in you. He'll put things in you to want. Are y'all with me right now? So as we're thinking about this focus and we're thinking about um, that there are hope, there are uh, things that originate in us things that begin in us. If we walk uprightly before him, we delight ourselves in him, we take our pleasure in him, then God is going to give us the desires of our heart. Remember now, if you're delighting yourself in the Lord, he's washing you. He's cleansing you. He's pruning you. He's purging you. If he's washing, cleansing, purging, pruning you, then your desires are changing. Your desires are being sanctified. They're being cleansed. They're being washed. There's some things that you want that you're not going to be wanting anymore because he's changing you. He's making you a new man. He's making you a new person. All right. So what are these hopes? And then there's things he's going to put in you. He's going to put in you uh, to want to have the things that he wants you to have. The scripture in, uh, let's run over there real quick. Second Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Run over there just for a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We'll start at verse 9, I believe it is. And this is a very important verse uh, when it comes to understanding God. Because God is much bigger than me. God is much bigger than you. And God has things in his mind. God has things in his heart that he intends and that he plans for you and for me. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse nine, notice what it says. But I, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart the things that God have prepared for them that love him. Now, these will be the things, uh, verse 10, but God have revealed them unto us by his spirit. These will be the things that as we're delighting ourselves in the Lord, the things that he had that our eyes haven't seen, that our ears haven't heard, they have not entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. These will be the things that he would put inside of the heart of a person who's delighting in him. 
the things that he wants for you, the things he has planned for you, the things he has intended for you. Our hope, our faith is built on those things, not the things that we want. A Louis Vuitton jacket, a Louis Vuitton outfit. You see what I'm saying? The stuff that we that we want that originates in us. What are the things that originate in God? What are the things that God has prescribed and desired for our lives? Amen. All right. So let's go back to uh, our list here. Let's go back to uh, review just quickly over a few things we've already talked about. What does this word hope mean? Miriam Webster defines hope as desired accompanied by expectation or belief in fulfillment. Right. So when you're desiring something, you believe it's going to be fulfilled. That's hope. Expectation of fulfillment or success. That's hope. What is hope? Someone or something on which hope is centered, something desired or hoped for. It is trust. It is reliance. When you have hope in something or own something, you trust in it, you rely on it. To hope without any basis or expectation of fulfillment. What does dictionary.com define it as? To cherish uh, a desire with anticipation. You have a desire and you're anticipating something. You're expecting something to come to pass. When, see, there's a hope that you want. You might want, uh, I, don't, I don't know, you might want to go to Hawaii. Okay, that's something you want. God may want you to go and feed the hungry uh, in Guatemala. That originated in God. You want to go to Hawaii. That originated in you. When we talk about the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the things that originate in us, that's us. But the things that originate in God, those are two different things. Our faith and what people have been preaching is that God wants to, that walking by faith is believing for the stuff you want. Walking by faith really is believing for the stuff that God wants. Yes. Amen. That's the primary. The secondary is believing in the things that you want. Mm -hmm. Believing for the things that you want. The primary is to seek God for his desires, his plans, his will, and to primarily seek those things. And as you're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these other things that we need in life and that we want in life, God said he will grant them. God said he will permit them. These are things that come as the results of just seeking the Lord and walking after him. Most humans, and I want to say this, most humans, when the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight, most humans walk by what they see that they want instead of walking by what is revealed to them that God wants. Let me give you an example. Most men pursue women that they see and they want. Would that not be walking by sight? Let's try that again. Most men pursue women that women that they see that they want. Are we all grown enough to talk plain this morning? Are y'all okay? All right. So, but what should we be walking by? The Bible says, uh, if a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Who knows better what a man needs as a wife, the man or God? Clearly, God knows better, right? God should reveal to a man the kind of wife that he needs, right? And then we should pursue what God is revealing to us that we need. I might lust a certain kind of woman. She might not be what I need. Is that right? I might, I might watch, see, you, when we're growing up and we're watching TV and we're growing up now and you're watching social media and you're going through Instagram like some of y'all men have been doing what you need deliverance from and you're sitting there and you're looking at all that kind of stuff and yearning at all these body types you're looking at and you're lusting and carrying on and now that's what you want. Your eyes are full of it, right? The scripture says. But what do you need? What if you need something totally different from what your eyes have been filled with lusting for? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's Miriam Webster. Dictionary.com defines hope as being a feel, a feeling of what is wanted that can um, be achieved, basically. Looking forward to something, a desire, reasonable confidence, to believe, to desire, to trust, to feel that something desired may happen. The American Heritage Standard defines it as to desire or to consider possible. Everybody say to desire. Or to, or to consider possible, right? To wish for a particular event, right, to take place, to have confidence, to trust. This is what it means to hope. 
All right. So God is wanting us to embrace the things that he has pre-planned and pre-purposed for us. Now, we've gone over a few things. Let me go over this one real quick. The focus of our faith and hope is God, right? Our faith and hope should be in God, right? So he's the focus of our faith and of our hope. That's God. And our faith and hope should be in God, right? Now, when we have faith in God, we have hope that what we see, uh, we have hope when we see nothing, when we see no hope. When we see everything going down, we believe things are going to go up. When we see people in bondage and they're locked in, we see deliverance and we see salvation. When we see somebody sick, we see healing. When we see somebody broken poor, we see blessing, needs met, and prosperity. Do you see that? When we see somebody on their way to hell, we see the ability to make it to heaven. This is what we see. We see hope when there is no hope. When in the natural with the eyes, there's no hope. Somebody may be dirty and nasty and smelling bad. We see somebody that the Lord has died for and who has who has redeemed them. And that they will put their faith and trust in him that he would turn their life around. It's not only what we believe for others. It's what we also believe for our own self. Can you say amen? amen. All right. So God wants us to realize that's the faith. That's the hope he puts in us. Now, this is what we've previously taught. We're going into something new on today, but I want to refresh this. What does hope produce in us? Number one, it produces experience, which is maturity. Hope, uh, hope, uh, what produces hope in us? Excuse me. Experience and maturity produces hope in us. The scriptures produces hope in us. God himself produces hope in us. Right. As our faith increases, hope is produced in us. Which means the more we rely on God, the more we depend on God, hope is produced in us. When we become connected to the covenants of promise, hope is produced in us. The gospel of Jesus Christ itself produces hope in us. When you're lost in this world and you have no hope of salvation at all, then you uh, you don't have any hope. You're going to hell. You're, you're doomed. But the gospel says that sinful fallen man has been redeemed by Jesus Christ, and it will put our faith and hope in him, we can be saved. We shall be saved. That's hope. Uh, we have everlasting consolation. The comfort of the Lord produces hope in us. The very fact that he's there to, uh, the Bible talk, talks about walking in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The fact that the Holy Spirit will comfort us, that he is called the comforter, amen, produces hope in us. The resurrection of Jesus Christ produces hope in us. The fact that he rose up from the dead, the death, the burial, the resurrection produces hope in us. That means you might be dead in areas of your life right now. You may be spiritually dead, mentally dead. Your marriage might be dead. Your relationship with your parents might be dead. Your relationship with your siblings might be dead. But because Jesus rose up from the dead, anything dead can come back to life. Anything dead can come back to life. Then diligence. Uh, a full assurance produces hope in us. He tells us that we'll be diligent to seek him, diligent to run after him, that hope will rise up in us. Why? Because the scripture says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm going to tell you what, everything may be going down. There's been a few times in my life where it seemed like everything was going down. You know what I learned? I, even if something, the devil even tell you, God don't want you. God done rejected you. He don't love you. You, you a cast away. And then you look at your sin, you be like, yeah, maybe I am. I don't know if y'all ever been through that, but I have. You look at your sin, but oh God, I'm fornicated. I'm adulterated. Some of y'all, I got high and smoked weed. I'm, I'm for, fornication, adultery. Oh Lord, homosexuality. Whatever it is, you look at your sin, you be like, oh Lord, oh no. Be like, I'm doomed. God don't love that. God don't love me. Then you remember the scriptures. He's a forgiving God. Yes. He's a merciful God. Yes. He's a long suffering God. Yes. He's a patient God. Yes. If you will come and confess your sin and repent. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is there for those who come to him to receive forgiveness. Mm -hmm. He's not going to make any of us repent. He's not going to make any of, any of us turn from our wicked way. It's not. Oh, God, I killed somebody. Forgive me, and then you go kill somebody else. Oh, Lord, I kill somebody, and then you go kill somebody else. Oh, Lord, I kill somebody, and you go kill somebody else. Oh, forgive me. You say, I keep getting, I'm, I'm forgiving. I'm forgiving. No, you, you haven't turned. You have to turn. You have to acknowledge what you're doing, 
feel sorrowful, not because you're going to jail, but sorrowful because you you violated his word. Because sometimes we get away with the sin. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Huh? Y'all, yeah, I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. See, we we look we look down on the people who fornicated and got pregnant out of wedlock. What about them that fornicated and didn't nobody get pregnant? See, some people think I fornicated, I got away with it, I'm smooth, I'm smart. You start then you start feeling like you something, right? You, no, no, you you didn't get away with it. You, sin separates us from God. Nobody gets away from being separated from God. We think we're close, but we're not. We think we're walking with him, but we're not. The Bible says if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. But if we walk in darkness, that we don't. And he says if somebody says that we walk, that we have fellowship with him, but we walk in darkness, he says we lie and the truth is not in us. None of us get away with that. Can you say amen? amen. So these are the things that produce hope in us, right? Then we looked at in our next set of teachings, what hope produces in us. Because when you have hope, it puts something in you. What does it put in us? Number one, it makes us not ashamed. When you got hope, you ain't ashamed. Oh, stuff going wrong right now, but Jesus is with me. He's going to turn this around. Stuff is bad right now, but all things work together for good of them that love him, them who are called according to his purpose. Oh, I'm a loser right now, but we win because he calls us to triumph. He makes us an overcomer. He, he, uh, we're more than a conqueror. See, all of these things happen in Christ Jesus. Yeah, it looks bad right now, but God is going to turn this thing around. The battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. The Lord is going to fight for me. The Lord is going to deliver me. The Lord is going to redeem me. Right? So he makes you not ashamed, so he gets the shame out of you. So that's getting the shame out of you. Are you with me? Removing the shame from your inward person. Then what he does is he works in the situation to make you not ashamed. So that's two different things. Sometimes you're walking through a shameful thing, but your head is up because you got God in you and you're walking through. it. Then he turns the situation where it's beauty for ashes. And now you're not ashamed no more. Yeah, your car is raggedy right now. It's not going to be raggedy forever. He's going to get you where you can ride in the raggedy car with your head up rejoicing in him. See, your head is up. You're rejoicing in him riding in the raggedy car. You're not ashamed in the raggedy car. That's one thing. You have no shame in the raggedy car. Then you get to the point to where he changes the car. You don't have any shame. He changes the car. Now you don't have no shame in you and the car is not raggedy. He changed your situation. Those are two different things, right? Because there's going to be times in life when stuff is going down that's not good. I talked to a person this week and I had to really uh, allow the Lord's nature to come through me and not my flesh irritation. Are y'all with me right now? Because sometimes we're talking to people and we're feeling something in our flesh and we might well come off in a way that's not how God would have us to come off. Right. And God would want to come off uh, better. And as I began to listen to this person, I, I realized I said, yes. Yeah. I, I, you know, they needed to, to let God work on them, but I needed to let God work on me so I could work on them. So God could work on them through me. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. You don't understand a minute. So they was just talking about this situation and how horrible it was, how bad it was, and how they didn't want to be in it. And I was just listening. I said, yes. And I was, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I was saying yes to them. I was saying yes to the Lord. Like, yes. Oh, yes. Bring me down. Bring, because about this, what? Condescend to men of lower state. Bring me down, Lord. Bring me down to where I can match where they are so I can give them your words so they can so they can be fed, so they can grow, yeah. so they can change, so they can be helped. They need help right now because they want to go off the deep end. Mm -hmm. You ever been talking to somebody ready to go off the deep end? You want to say, well, go on off the deep end then. <laughs> you don't want to listen to me. <laughs> you know, go on. So I said something, they kind of flicked it off, and I said, yes, Lord, yes. And they bring me on down so I could come. And then I, and then I had to share with them. I said, well, what does the Bible say? Huh? I said, well, what does the Bible say? When we're in the flesh, we ain't thinking about the Lord right now. We think about our flesh. What's the Bible say? Huh? Well, what does the Bible say about your situation? Well, the Bible say pray. Okay. <laughs> All right. The Bible say pray. Yeah, and the Bible say obey. Okay. Well, the Bible say obey. All right, the Bible say, you know, respect. All right. I respect. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to do all this right now. I'll say, okay, all right, I see this. But, we, but let's just acknowledge what the Bible says. What the Bible says? Bible says reverence, honor. Okay, Bible says reverence. Okay, what the Bible says? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You, Lord, you're going to help me. I said, yeah, he's he going to help us, brother. 
they're going to help us because I need help right now too. Amen. I need help so I can deal with you. And I need help so I can help you do the word of God. So, But do you see it? It's that he helps us in the situation. Because sometimes we're in situations. This person was in a situation that was adverse. They were being handled improperly. And what we do is we say, you know, I'm just a millisecond away from giving you the finger. <laughs> Go F yourself. Right. That's, that's what we that's what people be feeling. And so this person, though, didn't need to be flicking them off or quitting. This person needed to humble themselves to Jesus. Yes. Right. And do what Jesus is wanting them to do. Yes. And many of us are faced with these situations. Right. You don't control other people. You don't control. That's why they call marriage the ball and chain. Right. Because when you get married, you're stuck to that person. And that person may start treating you wrong and you're stuck. And then you start feeling in prison. And then you be like, oh my, what am I going to do? <laughs> right? That's why some people don't want to get married. They'll shack up and do everything else, but they don't want to get married because then they feel like they're really, they're locked, like they hit, they hit the door, the chain, like, like they hit the prison door, go, you know, like they're locked in now. All right? And, and, but see, God wants you to understand, I can give I can make you not ashamed. I can strengthen you. I can make you full of joy when your situation is not joyful. Amen. I can make you at peace when there's no peace in your situation. I can give you calm when there's wars and bombs and everything else going on around you. I can make you calm on the inside. That's one. Then two, I can calm your situation. But the way God moves, he wants to calm you internally. Before he calms your situation. What we want is to calm the situation. Then we'll feel calm on the inside. God works the opposite. He works in us first. Then he wants to fix everybody else. I remember I was looking puzzled at people. I was like, they're not dead yet. Why aren't they dead? Lightning bolts have not struck them. Why aren't they struck? Surely the Lord sees this evil. Surely the Lord sees this wickedness. You ain't never did this before. Somebody, somebody's cussing you out. And you're like, the Lord doesn't like that. They're gonna get hit with a bus. You know, you're sitting there. You're, somebody, somebody's mishandling you, and you're looking at them. And you're like, God, I know you see this is going on, and you're thinking to yourself, Ooh, they're gonna get stricken down. They're gonna lose their job. Something's gonna happen. And and then a day will go by. You know, like, nothing happened. A week will go by. You're like, nothing happened. A month will go by. You're like, nothing happened. And then I realized, I said, after a year or so. Maybe the Lord is not trying to change. Not that he don't want to change them. Maybe the Lord wants to change me. Not that it's okay what they're doing. God has an order. God wants to deal with you first. So while you're praying so hard that God changed everybody else. God changed my wife, my husband. Changed my mom, my dad. Changed my child. Changed my uncle. Changed my aunt. Changed my siblings. Changed, changed my boss. Changed my teammates. Change my coworkers. Change my this. We, we, I mean, we, we want God to change everybody. What about I change you? How about I make you the way you can handle what you're dealing with and it remain the same? And you be in joy, peace. You be strong. You be obedient, glorifying me in the midst of the hell. That's what he wants first. That's number one. He makes them not ashamed. He works on you internally. Number two, then he'll change your situation in nothing. You should be ashamed. Number three, what does hope produce in us? Patience. Because once God gives us hope, we get to where we say, oh, it's going to change. Uh, it's, the timing is not mine. See that? It's going to change in God's time and in God's season, but it's not on me. It's on God. God is going to work on that. Number four, it removes a type of sorrow. Everybody say it removes. A type, of sorrow, a type of sorrow, right? So we don't sorrow like those that have no hope. Number five, hope is a helmet or protection for our mind. Number six is an anchor of the soul. Number seven, I show hope that y'all go back and watch this stuff on video and write this stuff down because you need to be meditating on this. You need to have this right here. Amen. Because this is what so many of y'all go through this every day. Yeah. Every time you have to call somebody to talk about what you're going through, it's this right here. Y'all will be going through something and you you be like, help me because I'm about to lose it. It's this right here. Hope is a, a protection for our head. It's an anchor. It, it roots our soul so that we don't go off the cliff. It'll feel like y'all finna go off the cliff. 
Do you ever feel like you're finna pop? All of us do now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you ever feel like you're finna pop off? I'm, I'm finna pop off. I'm finna pop off. I'm finna give them pizza right here, right now. <laughs> right? It's an anchor for the soul. It, it, it roots our soul. It anchors us down. My goodness. Uh, so, right, so it makes not a shame and nothing be a shame. Patience, it removes the type of sorrow. It's a helmet, protection for the mind. It's an anchor for the soul, right? Uh, drawing nigh to God. Hope calls us to draw nigh to God. When you know, hey, God, you, you be like, you be trying to do something and all of a sudden you remember, God can deliver me. Amen. I'm going to run to the Lord. Amen. You be trying to fix something, you be like, God can fix this. I'm going to run to the Lord. You be trying to figure out what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. God knows what to do. Amen. I'm going to go to God. See it? Amen. What happens? When that hope rises up in you, it causes you to draw nigh to God. Amen. You ever been trying to plead with somebody? Please, I'm trying to help you. Can you see what I'm saying? Uh, um, let me say it another way. You say it another way, they still ain't hearing you. <laughs> let, me, let me just express. You, you, you do it three or four different ways, they still ain't hearing you. God can make you see. Then why am I trying so hard to talk to you and get you to understand? Uh -huh. God can make you understand. Amen. It gives you hope. Let me draw now to God. God will fix you. Number eight, and me, me too. See, it starts with me, then you. Everybody say, it starts with me, it starts with me. then you. Amen. See, I always get this. Whenever there's a problem in your home, God starts with you, not them. So when you go pray to God, pray to God first about you. Now, Lord, we got a problem, but let's start with me. <laughs> we have a problem. It's definitely we. And you might think, and, and here's the other thing. The other person may be have 10 things wrong, and you got one. But, oh, God got a lot of work to do on them. That's what you be thinking. God's going to work. He got, boy, he got 10 things. I can count them out, too. You count them all out, have a list. I remember one time I was talking to somebody. I said, no, 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 no. You wrong now. Let me tell you. Because right here, and right here, see, right here, and right here. And the Bible say this, and the Bible say that, too. And this right here, you violated that. You see this right here? And, 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 and yeah, I did this one thing. That's okay. Well, I'm starting with that one. Amen. God, that ain't fair. It is fair. I'm talking to you. Amen. When God talks to us, he talks to us about us. He wants to first get out of our eye, whatever it is, one, ten, a hundred, whatever it is. It's just one thing. He wants to get that out of our eye. Then we can see clearly. Amen. Say, Lord, they got ten things wrong. Yo, let's get this one out of you first. Once we get this one out of you, then you can see clearly how to help them with the ten. Till then, you ain't got no clue. Oh, Lord, I'll get in. <laughs> they made an F. One is a 90, right? One out of, if you miss one out of 10, isn't that a 90? Why well, we got to start with my one then, Lord? They missing eight things. That's a 20. That's an F. Why are we starting with me? If I made an A. That's always how it is. Drawn out of God. Number eight, purifieth himself. When hope is in you, it causes you to purify yourself. It caused you to begin to fix the things that are wrong with your life. Amen. All right, dear ones. So on today, what we're talking about is what should we hope for? Let's turn to Galatians chapter five. Verse five is going to be our focus. Galatians chapter five. We're going to begin to read it. Verse one. And let's work down through a few of these on today and allow the Lord to put his mind in us. Amen. The Lord wants to put his mind in us. Galatians 5, and we're going to be reading uh, starting at verse 1. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. All right. Notice what the word of God says. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, He's talking about how we come into righteousness in the new covenant, in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they achieve righteousness by obedience to the law. In the law, those who are of the seed of Abraham, who are of the house of Israel. Remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Those who were of the seed of Abraham, of the household of faith, the household of Israel, were given the law. The way you come into righteousness was by obedience to the law. The law prescribed that they should be circumcised. In the New Testament, in the New Covenant, we're not under the law. Now listen to me. Don't let people fool you into thinking that we're under the law. We're not under the law. Does it mean the law is totally vanished? No. Does it mean the law was bad? No. Does it mean the law was not spiritual? 
No. Does it mean that the law was not holy? No. It's just we're not under it. I live in the state of Alabama. When you're in Alabama, you live under Alabama law. Now, we can go up the street two hours, or we can actually go up the street an hour and be in Tennessee. Once we cross the border and we go into Tennessee, we are now under Tennessee law. It's not that anything is bad with Alabama. It's not that anything is wrong with Alabama law. We're no longer in Alabama. We're in Tennessee. When you go into Tennessee, you're under Tennessee law. Being under Tennessee law does not make the law of Alabama bad. It's just not the same. Okay. When the United States became a country and ratified the Constitution, the Constitution now became the law of the country. The, before the Constitution, the country was not under the law. Right. The colonies had laws. The Commonwealth had laws that it was under England uh, was this was a uh, what do you call it? A territory of England or a colony of England. So there were laws that were come passed over from there. But once the United States separated, had its own constitution. Now, that constitution was in place. It didn't mean England's law was bad or the Commonwealth laws were bad or what they had in place previously was bad. It just means once we came into that under that constitution. Now, that was the law of this land. Do you see what I'm saying? The new covenant is what we're under now. It doesn't mean the law was bad. We're just under the new covenant. Now that we're under the new covenant, he said he's going to put the law in our heart. He's going to put what we're not under anymore in our heart. We're under the new covenant, but he put the laws in our heart. Why? Because they were good. They were righteous. They were holy. They were things. That he don't want us to steal. He don't want us to kill. He doesn't want us to commit adultery. He doesn't want us to covet. He wants us to remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. You got to understand what that means, right? He doesn't want us to uh, bear any false witness. He doesn't want us to have any other God before him. He doesn't want any of those things, right? In the new covenant, though, we don't receive righteousness by obedience to the law. We receive righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ. Let's keep reading. So it says in verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Why? Because we don't become righteous by circumcision. We become righteous by Christ. If you're trying to achieve it through the means of the law, you're making Christ of no profit to you. Christ gives you the ability to come into righteousness by putting your faith and your trust in him. He takes our sin. He gives us his righteousness. That's how we come into righteousness. All right, so he goes on the same verse three. I testify to you again, to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ becomes of no effect unto you. Now, Paul was circumcised. He was circumcised. He was a Jew. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Pharisee. Paul was circumcised. But he's telling these new converts, if y'all are trying to now get, because Gentiles weren't circumcised. The children of Israel were circumcised. He says, if y'all are letting them teach you to do the practices of the law, you're losing the benefit of Christ. It's not necessary for y'all to get circumcised to come into righteousness. That's what he was telling them. Do you understand now? So some people were trying to teach the Gentiles to come into righteousness through obedience to the law. That's not the way. And so Paul was giving them clarity. I'm trying, I'm trying to let you see. Paul was a man that was circumcised. But he was teaching them the correct truth as a Gentile. No, you don't have to be circumcised to come into righteousness. Don't let that's a false teaching. Don't let that come into your ears. Mm -hmm. Christ has become of none effect to you. Verse four, whosoever of you is justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the spirit wait for the oh, hope of righteousness. By what? Faith. By faith. Right. So we have hope of righteousness. We have hope. We have an expectation, an anticipation of righteousness. Now listen to me. Every one of us who believe in Jesus should have a hope of righteousness manifesting in your life. Yes. Why? Because of faith in Jesus. Yes. You have hope of righteousness. That you're going to do stuff the right, right way. way. That you're going to do things in a way that pleases and is acceptable unto God. You have hope of righteousness. Praise God. All right, so that's number one. The hope of righteousness. Number two. Amazing.
God bless you, dear ones. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Image of Christ Ministries broadcast. I want you to know this broadcast comes to you because of faithful contributions of viewers, disciples, partners, just like you. I need your faithful and continual support. I'm asking you to take just a moment, go before the Lord in prayer, ask him if it is his will for you to come into covenant with the Image of Christ. We're living in a new covenant time. God has given us grace, amen, to do his will. Not only has he given us grace to do his will, but he gives us a grace, a favor, and empowerment from him to manifest his blessing and his increase in our lives so that we can manifest his covenant, so that we can show forth his glory. The scripture says it to us like this. He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, but he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. God is able to increase our seed some. He's able to increase the fruits of our righteousness. Amen. And then he goes on to say that God is able to make all grace abound towards us. Amen. That we always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Father, thank you so much for these dear ones who have tuned in. And those who are praying about coming into covenant with the image of Christ. We pray that your will be done. Deal with each person individually, lead their hearts, turn their hearts into your will. Master, may you be honored and glorified for all that is done in Jesus' name. I want you to know that we thank you for tuning into the broadcast. We thank you for praying that prayer. And for whatever contribution you give, thank you so much for the support of the ministry so that we can fulfill the great commission and the vision of the image of Christ. God bless you. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your kindness that you give to us. Thank you, Father God, for this wonderful teaching that you have blessed us to receive on tonight. And we trust in you, Father, to deal with each one of our hearts, uh, drawing us into repentance by your goodness. May your light shine into the areas of our darkness and expose it. May your fire, Lord, uh, melt us in your very presence and Cause the impurities to arise as we hear and receive your word, as we live in this life and deal with the tribulations and the trials and the tests that come before us. We pray, Father, that your justification and your, your sanctification manifest in our lives. We thank you for your power of deliverance, your power of healing, your strength, God, that you release towards those that are called by your name. Hallelujah, Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. As I pray right now concerning the souls of men and women who are listening, the souls of individuals who are listening tonight. Lord, you said that it is your will that all will be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. You said, Father, it's not your will that any should perish, but that all will come into repentance. I pray, Father, for souls. I pray for salvation. I pray for healing and deliverance. I pray for redemption to manifest in the lives of individuals that are watching. Draw them unto yourself. We give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Now, dear one, you may be watching right now, never giving your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus came and died on the cross to pay the price for the sins of mankind. But we have to receive the work that Christ has done. Yes, he's already paid the price for all people. But the scripture says, as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We have to hear the seed of the word of God receive it into our hearts and allow that seed to grow. It manifests in a tree that bears fruits. It's going to be fruit unto repentance. It's going to be fruit of the spirit. It's going to be fruit of righteousness that is going to come forward if the seed of the word of God is taking root and good ground in our hearts. I want to admonish you. I want to encourage you. Reach out to him if you want to receive Jesus. You want to follow him. You want to become uh, you want to embrace the work that he has done, the redeeming work upon the cross, giving his life as a substitute for us uh, who had sin, amen, that we might receive his righteousness while he takes on our sin and his blood was shed for the remission of our sin to wash and to cleanse us. Reach out. Myself, one of the ministers, we'll take time to talk with you. We want to link hand in hand with you and walk with you uh, to help disciple you in the things of the Lord uh, so that you can be everything the Lord has called and appointed and assigned for you to be in Jesus name. Uh, dear, dear ones, just a brief reminder that the ministry does come to you because of the faithful contributions of viewers, disciples and partners just like yourself. I need 
your faithful and continual support. I'm asking you, if you've not been sowing into this ministry, to take just a moment and pray to the Lord about becoming a uh, beginning to connect with the image of Christ and to covenant with us to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Uh, it's because of you, dear ones, that we're able to do the things that we do. Uh, there's different ways that you can give. All of them are at Image of Christ, I-N-T-L, whether it is Zelle, whether it is Cash App, whether it is PayPal, whether it's Venmo, you're able to give at Image of Christ, I-N-T-L. Praise God. And we are so blessed. We're so fortunate uh, to have individuals just like yourself, amen, who love the work of the Lord, love this ministry and what God is doing and who support and undergird it, amen, through your giving. And we thank God for you. We praise God for uh, your portion uh, in this ministry, your portion and participation in the things that God has assigned for us to do. Take us some time, pray about it, sow into the work of the ministry on tonight. Praise God. Well, dear ones, listen, we are all out of time, and I pray that this ministry has been being a blessing to you. I pray that you are encouraged and that you're strengthened uh, through the truths of the word of God that we're sharing as the Lord is leading us uh, to teach, to preach, to minister his word. It is a privilege. Uh, we count it a privilege and an honor to come into your uh, uh, media devices, whether it's your cell phone, your laptop, your desktop, whether it is your smart television whatever media that you're receiving us on, it is our privilege to come and to share the truths of the word of God with you. And thank you so much for tuning in and listening and receiving, amen, the word of God. Well, dear ones, we're all out of time. I pray that you've been blessed and that you've enjoyed it. Amen. Let's have a blessed, wonderful evening. Throw your finger up and say it with me one time. What? Our destiny is the image of Christ, the manifested sons of God. Blessings be unto you. Love you. Till we meet again on Wednesday night. Talk to you soon. Come pray in thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in our life as it is in heaven.